we'll go out and deliver a performance like that. You've played in so many incredible matches throughout your career, but could you tell us your recollection of coming up against Sam Burgess in your World Cup victory against England at Twickenham and the build-up and sort of aftermath to that incredible day for you? Yeah, massive, massive day. Um, yeah, forever one of the one of the biggest games in the, in the career of any Welsh rugby player playing England at their World Cup in Twickenham. It's um, you know a recipe for for just an amazing day isn't it and we were fortunate we were on the right side of the scoreline and um we'll never forget it and you know the battle with sam was was huge wasn't it so it got built up throughout the week um you know the press were, were, were touting two kind of big lads going up against each other um and i speak about it in the book about it at length um around you know his inexperience in, in union you know it's an unbelievable rugby league player um incredible player but his inexperience in, in union, I was like, when they named him, on, on one half of me was like, Jesus, lad, is big. And I, he's, he's bigger than me and he's punchier than me as well um, in the carrying and in the contact as well. So it's a proper, proper physical challenge. And not often do I have those sort of challenges in the game because I'm quite a big lad. You know, it's only ever been Sonny Bill Williams, Manonu, sort of these lads who I look at and go, right, I'm, I'm going to get properly challenged physically. <laughs> Um, and, and Sam Burgess is one of those because he's a big lad. Um, but as an experience in union, on the other hand, I'm thinking, right, we, you know, this is this is happy days because you know they've picked the guy who doesn't have much experience in union. Um, and so yeah, we it was unfortunately during the game, I don't think we get to you know collide much in the, in in that sense. But just an amazing day, man. I, it's you know to this to this day, I've never seen so many grown men cry. I remember I remember coming out of the change room and seeing all the Welsh huddled around the bus, you know, by the lion gates by there, Twickenham. I mean, there must have been thirty or forty blokes just in tears, like as we got back on the bus, all hugging gats, like just just an unbelievable experience. His class is my brother was working on the camera as well. So he was on the corner pitch cam. So I remember coming off the you know, coming off the pitch and I see my brother uh, all my good mates are there and stuff. Just a special day, brutal day for England, but you know, as a Welsh rugby player, pretty, pretty special. Burgess made did make a couple of comments uh, about that game. He said, I'm, t- "I'm getting an exact quote here. I'm sure when I left the field in this game, we were leading by ten points with fifteen minutes to go. Jamie Roberts collided with me a few times. I think they enjoy the game a little better when I left the field." Nah, well, lucky. I do, whatever. I do, what, what, you know, whatever he thinks about the game, um, you know, I respect. I respect Sam. I think he's a, he's a he's a top lad. Obviously, a brilliant, brilliant player. And you know, I speak about it at length in the book. Um, oh, just a about diplomat. I love it. Sorry. Say that again. I said you're a wonderful diplomat. Keep going. <laughs> diplomat. <laughs> <laughs> I want yeah. some teeth, Jimmy. I've seen them. I've seen them before in the chain room. I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, but it's fascinating. I it just unfortunately, he was made a bit of a scapegoat um, by the by the certainly by the English media um, around that. But you know, it's it's the English management that, that put him in that situation. Um, it's like, did, it, did they win the? Did they lose the game because he was picked there? No, no, they yeah. lost the game because Lloyd Williams is crafty left boot. Down the left hand touchline, delicious scrum half. One of the most momentous occasions in your career, not a positive one, but could you reveal to us the story behind the untold conflict in 2017, which meant that you never played for Wales again? No, it's, look, it's difficult, um, difficult time in my career. I, I probably struggled for a year, year after it. It was just a brutal situation, really, because I, I'd agreed with. Um, Harlequins, I had full release for, for all training and playing for Wales. Um, I just remember being in being in Wales camp and, and, and our last game, we always play one game outside the fixture, the international window. Yeah? And our last game was South Africa at home. And, I, you know, Gats came up to me early in the week and, and told me they were going to start with, with Hadley at 12 and I'd be on the bench. Um, but there was this issue brewing with, with Harlequins um, who basically said to me, look, if, if you play come the weekend, you, you can no longer be a Harlequins player uh, because they've been threatened with a um, one, a monetary fine and two, points deduction uh, because of the PRL rules around player release, etc., outside the window. And it was a brutal situation because, you know, a fine is one thing. I think when you start talking about points deduction as well, you, you're impacting your club teammates um, who were, you know, striving 
that season, all of a sudden they get to the points because you want to play for your country. It's an awful moral kind of dilemma uh, yeah. to be in. And uh, just throughout the week, yeah, again, emotionally, it was very, very tough. And it ended up, you know, driving down the M4 in tears, um, going back to Quinns. And, uh, yeah, I didn't get picked to play for Wales again. It was very... Um, really weird way to finish my test career and as I said emotionally I, I struggled for a year it was on the back of my mind every day uh, for about a season season and a half certainly during my time in Bath Max um, yeah. and it was tough you know when you're involved in a team so long and then it finishes like that you know you talk about closure and whether that's in different aspects of your life or relationship or relationships or whatever it, it's, it's quite important Um I never kind of got that, and it broke me. It broke me for like a year and a half. And I did get closure. Come the World Cup, you know, those cycles, I understand how players' cycles go and, and slept in the sides of the World Cup. Come the World Cup, you know, I was out in Japan watching the lads play, and I was like, do you know what? That's, that's my time um, at test level. But, yeah, it was, it was a tough way to end, end the career. Again, those emotions I talk about quite deeply in the book, um, and it is very challenging. Hey, James, tell me this. How asking for a mate? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm not going to write a book. But <laughs> how how do you write a book? Like, obviously, you don't write it yourself. You just talk to someone, or did you write it yourself? Do people do that? How does it work? Uh, no. So Ross Harry is not a book. So Ross is a, he's written a few books previously. Um, you know, kind of established um, broadcast journalist here back in Wales. Has done some stuff with you know Amazon recently in November. So Ross and I, yeah, sat down, wrote the pitch, and he pitched to publishers. Um, and you go from there, you know, you get accepted by a publisher. And I think it was a lot of it was during COVID, man. So, you know, a lot of it was over Zoom, which was quite challenging. But, you know, when the rules were relaxing, we got to meet up probably maybe 10 or 15 times. We met up for the three hours and just chewed the fat. My best source of info was iCloud, funnily enough, because you think, how on earth am I going to remember? Yeah, flick that through. And, mate, you just go back through your cloud. And he'd be like, oh, God, like, yes, South Africa, 2008. Class, I was there with that guy. And then all of a sudden, oh, you remember yeah. all the story. Um, That's quite cool. So that was my biggest challenge, actually, coming to write a book. I'm just thinking, I've got no chance here. I'm going to have to... <laughs> my parents are pretty diligent. They've kept every newspaper article back in the day, probably like anyone's parents. So they're kind of so proud that all the newspaper clippings that gave me all that. They said, here you are, here's the archive boxes of the stuff here it is and you know fair play to ross he went through most of it uh, corroborated what i was saying um he's 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 such a good writer uh, the fit from the first chapter i read he sent it through to me i was like mate you've he kind of understood exactly how i wanted the book to be and um yeah it's cool when you see it you know i've dedicated it to my boy um you know hopefully one day you can read it and, and understand what is uh what is that didn't again yeah that's yeah. pretty cool Who's have you got an audio book for it? There is an audio book. Do you know what we got? Uh, Look at trying to plug it? himself. Yeah, man. Do, you, do you have an audio book? Do you want to There is an audio book. You, you can't read. Me or you, <laughs> no, I was wondering. Do you narrate it? He wants no. to narrate it for you, doesn't he? Uh, listen to him. Listen to the subtle dose. No, I just of his love beautiful. I, just love, I think Jimmy would have been good to narrate. He's got a good voice. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I'm not sure your your amazing accent would be suitable for my. I've, I've got more Richard Burton. Um, you know, kind of the West words. I'm also plugging myself. Look what you guys have done now. But anyway, no thanks. The, uh, no, I got. I, do you know what the audio button was funny? Because you, you get them, um, you get forwarded um, a couple of examples, and they read a passage of your book. Uh, yeah. And, it, and you get sent the audio files. I was so funny. I mean, there was one. There was one lad who had like kind of this Cardiff chavy accent, probably similar to me. And then there was this other guy who had a more, you know, established um, West Wales accent. You know, it, it was more powerful, you know, West Wales. And I was like, you know what, go, go with the West Wales man, you know. Yeah. It sounds more majestic. Yeah. yeah. More majestic, <laughs> you know, war of the worlds, you know. All right, quick fire questions. Drum roll. Jamie Roberts, best player you've ever played against? Carter, because uh, I was kind of a, as a defensive captain leader, you, you always try and anticipate the game. Um, and he was just one play away. He thought he was going to run, he'd kick. He thought he was going to pass, he'd run. Uh, he just could never, never anticipate what he was going to do um, as an opposition fly half. Best player you've played alongside? Uh, Shane Williams. 
um, purely he had the ability I don't think I've played with anyone since him uh, who had the ability to to influence i.e. win a game on his own like you know I'd be in games with Shane 60 minutes 65 minutes you know games on edge and you know I think everyone in the team would be like just get the ball to Shane he was that sort of player you could you could change a game on his own and I, I've not played with anyone who had that ability uh, so shame and uh, JB final one your proudest moment in the game um, proudest moment I, yeah there's a, there's a few there's some awesome moments with some great great people but proud pride and probably a first cap for your country I think probably you know when you reflect and you know, when were my parents most proud? Um, yeah, I think when it, when you actually realise the dream of playing for your country, first cap, 2008, um, for Wales against Scotland and Cardiff. 